so uh, you can see the topic of this video and I think this is going to be a fun video uh, my name is uh, the nerd man this is with enough prep time I'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet so my view on whether Zack Snyder likes uh, Superman or not okay so um, I was watching the recently uh, the uh, Kevin Smith interview on um, uh, the uh, Justice League Snyder Cup and how it, and whether he supports it or not so what Kevin Smith said was um, that he uh, supports the Snyder Cup he wants it to come out he wants he thinks uh, that they should give um, Zack Snyder the 20 million to make the Snyder Cup and then on top of that he finally said that um, he also thinks that Zack Snyder should be able to complete his Justice League uh, universe, i.e. the three-part arc of the Justice League um, that, uh, that um, he wanted to do. Um, so I responded to that because I took, I, I, I quite honestly... I hope I don't get disliked straight away because I am an actually a Zack Snyder flat, uh, fan. Um, but uh, I, I responded to that. Um, I was so behind you, Kevin, until you said... Uh, until you said that you'd like Zack Snyder to continue his vision. Um, for... Uh, for Justice League okay um, and then I uh, uh, then I said uh, you know no way I, I really don't want uh, him to continue the Justice League movies I said let Zack Snyder this, this is what I thought would be a better use of Zack Snyder's talents. Adapt deconstructionist graphic novels of the material. Okay? That he will, res where he really re respects the kind of um, deep philosophical um, material pertaining to um, those uh, graphic novels. So, for instance, I thought a perfect character for him to adapt would be something like The Question or um, do a, a take on Red Sun, the Superman story where Superman was, um, in fact, landed in the Soviet Union. Or perhaps, uh, perhaps The Dark Knight Returns. Actually, just go ahead and do a two-part of The Dark Knight Returns or something like Flashpoint, um, which I think he'd be excellent at. Let someone set up a main, someone else set up a main universe where you have the DC characters with as not as they should be, but in uh, that have uh, that have them uh, representing what classically in most people's minds they represent. So, you know, Superman and Wonder Woman are aspirational heroes. Uh, Aquaman, um, you know, Flash are more kind of, um, uh, they're more, uh, you know, kind of clown comedy relief, um, you, you know, kind of characters um, uh, that, that have a kind of more lighthearted kind of tone to them and have a little bit more, f a little bit more flaws uh, to them uh, than Superman and Wonder Woman. Um and then, you know, uh, you have the same kind of thing goes with Green Lantern. Um, and, of course, Batman, who is the anti-hero, who, you know, is only uh, separated from his villains by one central moral belief, which is he won't kill and he won't, you know, torture or... You know, uh, not at least torture where he's causing you know physical damage, or hang you off a roof and, and and let you fly down or whatever. But he won't you know like break your legs and spine till uh, so that you're you're a paraplegic or something like that. So that's the rule that separates him from um, the villains. So one of the great traditions of the DC universe has always been the Elseworld where they play with these kind of notions of 
what these heroes um, are and what they ought to be and what would happen if there was something slightly different happened in their universe. And I think that is what Zack Snyder is clearly brilliant at. Something like um, the Injustice game, like an adaptation of that, would be great for him. But you, for that movie to have the power that it needs on the general audience, you need to have a Superman that people actually look up to and aspire to so that their heart is genuinely broken when they see a Superman that, wait a second... This Superman will kill, or this Superman, you know, or this Batman, you know, the Batman Thomas Wayne from the graphic novel Flashpoint, where he's shooting guns and really would kill or torture anyone, doesn't have a power in a universe where Batman already uh, kills and, and, and has a disregard for human life. They only work within the deconstructions, and that is what, why I was saying that Zack Snyder is better off having the main DC Universe continuity and then give him films to adapt. Once you've established a Superman, right, it doesn't matter if it's in a, a more serious tone. I hate the word dark because I, I think that's a... Chris Nolan did great things but also ruined... Um, uh, you know, uh, superhero cinema because the, of the language he used around his um, Batman uh, movies, which I also used, and and I was I was um, also uh, guilty of using it. He used the word dark and gritty, whereas what I saw when I saw Batman Begins was psychological realism. We took this character. That was ultimately a comic book character. And we said, wait, wait a second. What would he be like, really, psychologically speaking, um, if he if he were in the real world? What would Gotham be like? What, what does it mean to be this dark gothic um, place where that is completely crime ridden in the real world? And that's what he did. He, he, he transferred those concepts to a real world that was more psychologically grounded, not dark. You know, Batman could still make jokes about the Batmobile, you know, like, oh, do you have it in black? You know, wink, wink. And, you know, um, also kind of, kind of in a way, um, had that kind of fourth wall, not exactly fourth wall breaking, but, um, you know, meta, meta commentary within the, within Batman Begins, where he, you know, obviously discusses, um, you know, what the Batman legend actually means to us, the viewer. You know, uh, that is what um, Ra's al Ghul constantly does in Batman Begins. He discusses the legend of the Dark Knight, which is that meta-analysis on top of the psychological grounded realism, uh, which was a good way to oppose the two concepts, because you've got one idea that is very hyper real where the, the film is actually commenting on uh, the mythology the comic character mythology of Batman but actually the film is doing something completely uh, different with Batman uh, where he's much more psychologically grounded and real and you feel like Bruce Wayne is a person who might actually even be able to do all of this stuff right so my point was that um, by by naming it dark and gritty, I think that is where uh, people went wrong because they were like, oh, let's make a dark and gritty Superman. And so now when people say, oh, we don't want, you know, that a dark and gritty Superman doesn't fit the character... What they think we mean is that, oh, we want this kind of cartoon character, Christopher Reeves type Superman. And that is not what we're saying. Or at least that's not what I'm saying. I don't think that I, 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 I was going to say something, but I, I don't I, I, I never want to see a Christopher Reeves like Superman again. Um, I thought uh, Superman Returns was very, very misguided. All I want to see is taking that comic book character of Superman, 
right? Taking the features of his personality and his mythos and saying, how can we psychologically ground that so it has some verisimilitude, some realism? What would it mean to be a guy who's just like a generally good guy or parents who, you know, raise their kid with like these great um, values, you know, uh, or something like that? Just ground him in a kind, ground that in a real world. I mean, uh, unless we're trying, or what would it be for in the real world for um, there to be a guy who's a little bit comically clumsy, right? Uh, and how would he do that rather than, you know, the slip on the banana kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, kind of Charlie Chaplin-esque uh, 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 physical comedy. I just want a much more subtle take on how, you know, this guy... Uh, you know, is a bit nerdy, Clark Kent, and is is a is a bit like physically challenged, right? That's what I would want, but still psychologically real. And then he, as he becomes Superman, that he's just a good guy who wants to help people and stuff like that. But he has some real psychologically real reasons for wanting to actually do that. You know, maybe he's gone around the world and helped out in you know refugee camps or something like that. And then he comes back to Metropolis and he's like, wow, I can do all these things, you know, and my parents raised me so well, you know, maybe I should find a way of uh, being able to uh, do this. And then, you know, problems ensue because people are scared of him because he's godlike and because he's whatever. All of that is perfect in the Superman uh, uh, you know, in a Superman story set in a real world, of course people would be frightened of Superman. I don't think people, Superman would fly around on the first day and people would just be okay with like this alien flying around. So yeah, I'd want people to respond and react uh, to that in a more realistic manner and look at the philosophical implications of, you know, being an alien from another world, right? And I, those are the things I do enjoy about man.